ओम श्री साई राम प्रशांति संदेश साई फर्ड्स ऑफ विजडम वेलकम्स यू स्वामी इज द इन डेलर इन एवरी वन बोथ एनिमेट एंड इन एनिमेट the divinity is more expressed in animate while it is only latent in inanimate swami loves animals so much when swami speaks of his visit to east africa in the olden days he feels excited every time talking about those wild animals and the jungles that he visited he has got immense love for all this animal world we know of sai geeta an elephant here in prashantalayam the stayed with swami for long and uh, swami liked sai geeta very much all of us know that we also know the gokulashtami celebration devotees from different places whosoever that find it possible assemble here gokulashtami is lord krishna's birthday and uh, in all cows from gokulam are brought here they are well decorated they are brought here by students who just uh, dress themselves like cowherd boys very interesting to watch along with these cows the royal elephant sai geeta comes behind very highly decorated as sai geeta approaches kolonth hall well it's sight for gods all devotees are very much excited to watch Swami goes very close to these cows and he feeds them and goes very close to Sai Gita and spends considerable time and offers apples and it appears as though he speaks to Sai Gita he whispers into her ears be very nice and surprisingly enough it is quite uh, interesting to note how these cows sai geeta look at swami and swami looks at them it was full of love full of love overflowing that's what we find and now i should bring to your attention another small story there are two dogs by name jack and jill that lived with swami pets pets jack and jill pet dogs and uh, it so happened i mean that the, of course before that let me tell you these two dogs used to sleep right at the feet of swami every night they were so close to swami well now it so happened maharani from mysore happened to visit prashantinalayam in those days as you know the transport is very poor and roads are not well laid people find it difficult at night in particular so having taken swami's blessings maharani of mysore was leaving this place prashantalayam swami called this jack the the pet dog and instructed this dog to show the path the queen of mysore well they uh, proceeded to some distance because it was so dark that night they want to take rest and then proceed next morning they stopped the car at one place and this jack dog slept underneath the car next morning the driver sat there in his seat and started the car most unfortunately unknowingly 
a tire of the car ran over the leg of this dog jack the leg was fractured the car left this jack dog went on crying and crying dragged the body all through the sands came all the way ultimately came to swami watching swami it left its body that is must have been its desire to end its life at the feet of swami even today you find samadhis built there in brindavan just by the side of swami's building commemorating these two dogs jack and jill i also remember a day when a deer in brindavan started running all the way and came to swami's building trai brindavan around 12 or 12:30 in the noon it's not the time for swami to get down but anyway surprisingly enough he opened the door and came out this deer watching the swami breathed its last watching me there swami said this has been the prayer of this deer to die at the lotus feet to bless it i have come all the way this news has gone to students they started running from the mandir to have swami's darshan as they were running swami noticed, noticed and joked this is a four legged deer while those two boys are two legged deer the two legged deer while these four legged deer and everybody laughed and then swami said this deer and those deer are very dear to me that's how swami expressed his love towards students and he often said that the student constitute the real wealth of bhagwan baba and now i should also bring to your attention that swami never wishes us to change our religion our presiding deity any time we should hold on to our own um religion hold on to our own dharma and we don't need to change at all because baba embodies all the gods and goddesses all powers are contained in him just as all the rivers merge into mighty ocean the names and the prayers offered to different gods reach bhagwan because baba said all names are mine all forms are mine bhagwan is omnipotent bhagwan said when you come to me there is no need for you to change the worship of the name and the form you are accustomed to because all names and forms are mine your devotion reaches me here in this context i should bring to your attention a small anecdote near mumbai there is a place by name ganesh puri there in that place there is samadhi of a swami by name nichyananda swami and his disciple by uh, by name his sridhananda at that time was staying in mangalore and he happened to visit the residence of a sai devotee where bhajan was going on at the end of the harati this swami sridhananda the disciple of that great saintly personality nichananda swami this sridhananda now started sharing tears and went into the state of samadhi for a long time and it took some time for him to come back after coming back to his conscious state 
Shadhananda said, Look here, my Guru Swami Nichananda is asking me to go with Dr. Gadia for Sri Satya Sai Baba's darshan. I may tell you, Dr. Gadia is an ardent devotee of Bhagwan, uh, hails from London. So, the Shiddhananda, accompanied by Dr. Gadia, went to see Swami in Puttaparthi. And Bhagwan called both of them for an interview. And naturally, as you know, there will be many others also who will be called for an interview. Swami, in his usual manner, started rotating his hand to materialize Vibhuti. And Swami Sardhananda suddenly caught hold of Swami and stopped him by holding his wrist. All those who were present in the room were stunned. Dr. Gadia felt awkward since he had brought Sardhananda for Baba's darshan. But Shanti Swarupa, the embodiment of peace, Bhagawan was unmoved. Smiling lovingly, he asked Sardhananda, Why did you hold my hand? Sardhananda replied, I have not come here to get chocolates or peppermints. I expect something much greater, higher. Then Baba smilingly asked, Do you mind if I give chocolates and peppermints to others? Bhagavan then materialized Vibhuti and gave it to all others except Swami Sraddhananda. Baba then called each one into the inner room to give them personal guidance. The last one to be called was Swami Sraddhananda. Bhagavan Baba opened the top two buttons of his robe and asked Sraddhananda to look at his chest. As he did so, he became ecstatic and with the tears rolling down his cheeks, exclaimed, O Gurudev, you are here in the form of Sri Satya Sai. As he looked at Bhagavan Baba's chest, he was blessed with a vision of his Guru, Swami Nityananda. Many from all over the world have had similar experiences where they have been blessed with a darshan of their Ishta Devata in Bhagwan Baba. Therefore, we don't have to change our religion or our presiding deity or family deity. Now, Bhagwan Baba, as we know and hear from all devotees, that he is omnipresent. His blessings are showered in whichever form of God one may worship. Swami showers His grace on those devotees, for He is the nourisher of the entire universe and the supreme essence of all. Swami's devotees from all over the world have been blessed with this darshan in the form of their Ishtadevata, desired deity. Many of His European devotees have seen him as Lord Jesus. Some of his old devotees have had his darshan in the form of Shirdi Sai. There are some fortunate ones who have been blessed with the darshan of Sri Siva Sai at the Virupaksha temple. Here I would like to share with you a small story. There was a lady who was an ardent devotee of Swami. She would sometimes go for Swami's darshan after discharging the family responsibilities. Many a time she felt that her son too should accompany her, but her son had contrary feelings. Once somehow she convinced him to accompany her. On the way, he suddenly his son said to her, I will not come to Puttaparthi. Instead, I will go to Tirupati. And he left for Tirupati. His mother went all by herself for Swami's darshan. 
in darshan swami came straight to her and gave her pada namaskar but she looked sad on seeing this swami asked her amma why are you unhappy choked with emotion she was unable to speak swami said amma just as i am here in puttaparthi i am in tirupati as well so don't be sad your son is visiting tirupati isn't it it means he has come to me so this is a proof to say that swami represents all gods and goddesses and then it is also very important for us to note that swami has no attachment whatsoever when once he leaves vrindavan he doesn't speak about it when when once he leaves prashantalayam he doesn't speak out speak about it after the sala is over no more discussion about it he is totally detached parityagi meaning the one who renounced no attachment but at the same time he is equally attached to all being the father mother brother and friend at the age of 14 itself sachinarayan raju bhagwan baba left his home and declared that he was sai baba at the time he was he referred to his worldly mother as maya and renounced all worldly ties sarva sanga parityagi the one who renounced one can use the word detached for sadhus and sanyasis but not for swami as is god and transcends the three gunas the relationships of mother father brother sister and friends are part and parcel of human birth to snap these worldly ties he ate only three morsels of food from his mother iswaramma's hands just to please and episa and said now maya illusion has left me swami respectfully address his worldly father as griham abbai g r i h a m a b b a i griham abbai and mother as griham ammai g r i h a m a b m a i he also gave respect to all the elders in the family but ultimately the essential relationship between them was one of god and devotees from childhood itself little satya was never attracted to worldly things the other children in the home were drawn towards food colorful clothes and entertainment but young satya was never inclined towards these things swami who transcends gunas has no worldly attachments yet like all incarnations of god he is bound to his devotees he is ever engaged in the spiritual upliftment of his devotees towards the supreme goal he declared in childhood i was born to serve and has been serving mankind ever since he showers love on all but takes particular care of his students holistic progress the unconditional love that is showered by sai mata on these students is several times more than the love they receive from their own parents thank you for your time meet again sai ram